Oh, this is excellent, men. Limitless. It. This issue is the introduction of the character Drive Shaft, who is a minor character that I put up there as one of those characters that only I care about, or at least one of those characters I seem to care about a lot more than anyone else does. This character, he has subsequent appearances in that great Top Gun solo series. He was a supporting character in that. He was also a member of the sadly short-lived second New Warriors series. And then he briefly adopted the Top Gun name himself. And he died a lame death. He was also in Wolfman Origines, the film. He was played by Charlie from Lost, hence the name Drive Shaft. You all, everybody. This is his first appearance, and it details his life before the island. And as first appearance as Gan, it is quite robust and singular in its focus on him as a character. Charlie is just a normal teenage kid until one day he discovers his muty powers, which are generic electricity ones. He had a normal life with a normal family until this happened and it caused all the dialogue balloons on this page to be misaligned. The layers were not lined up correctly so all the speech bubbles are about an inch to the right of where they should be. Often covering characters like his dad's face here or like down here falling outside of the panel. This happened more times than Marvel would like to admit in comics from this time period. Fortunately it's only that one page. There are some comics where it's like that for the all flipping issue. So Charlie, he has discovered his muty powers. But it's okay because the excellent men know about them. So they come and knocking. Or just the whore anyway. She probably saw the chance to fuck someone who isn't her husband and leapt at this recruitment mission that would surely be better suited to Dr. X or maybe Squealy or Emma Frosties, the faculty involved with actually running the school. The Hawk, I reckon she likes Gannon and D&E's house calls because she can... Shag all the dads and her husband will never nah. The art for this issue is split. It is a double length story so it has got two artists. They are both good but the problem is that the second one is Wallace Gromit who I reckon is great. And he overshadows this first artist more than a bit. One thing refreshing here is that Drive Shaft has a totally supportive family. They aren't disowning them for being different or scared of them. And even his school life is just normal. He is not a Peter Parker copycat. He is just a properly normal kid. He asks out the girl that he fancies and she says yes. Normal kid in that. He's not down on his luck or bullied or out. 
some people might see him as being a stock character or being generic. But I think the stuff they did with him getting the mutie aids, it raised them above just being a stock character or another generic young mutie. It gave him his own stories and unique challenges and allowed us to see someone dealing with and coping with the affliction. His mutie powers manifest again at school and the whore and Ed Gambit, they had been trailing him and keeping an eye on him. Now and this woman like RD, this is probably just after they had been fucking behind her husband's back. And I recommend this issue, but to stop it from being too long a video diving into Drive Shaft's character, I'm going to skip a few pages, not to appease the supposed copyright gods, but because there's one other thing to talk about, and that is something that I hate. I do really like his parents being quite grounded and their response to their son being a mutie. It is one of love and concern rather than just plain bigotry. The only real bit of negativity like that is this scene where his best friend is afraid of him. And after this scene, we get to Wallace Gromit art as Charlie visits the excellent men's house and he meets Dr. X. And we eventually will get to the bit I ate, which is not this double splash page, but instead that this issue is one of many that screeching idiots point to as definitive proof that Snowman is and always has been gay. Snowman and Drive Shaft bond, they become quite good friends. And these stupid people, they think that because a man is bonding with a male child, it must be homosexuality. It's very homophobic and bigoted. The idea that there is any romantic angle or attraction here. You were saying that Snowman is gay, but he fancies a young boy. Homophobically equating paedophilia with closeted homosexuality. Just so that you can flex about... How you always knew Snowman was meant to be gay. The main stuff they point to though is more so this bit where Drive Shaft, he learns that he has fully blown muty aids. He is obviously upset by this and he storms off. And then Snowman gans after him to try and comfort him. And Snowman talking about an AIDS allegory. Well, that is just proof that he was gay all along, isn't it? If a male character ever expresses sympathy for a young boy with AIDS, then he is automatically gay all along. Everything with Snowman being gay is homophobic. I fucking hate it. I love this scene here. This was a scene where Snowman, he was written as a sympathetic, human character, trying to cheer up an upset child who has become his friend. It was never about Snowman being gay or subtly hinting at his super secret sexuality, or him grooming a child. I hate how these twats on Twitter turn 
any hard snowman story or character moment into being about him being gay all along. When, like in this issue, any link, it is spun from close-minded, homophobic, stereotypical thinking. So we end with the other artist, drive shaft, guns home, but he's still close with the girl he fancies. It is a happy ending, sort of. And he phones up Snowman afterwards to tell him all about the girl. Because only gay people like Snowman gossip over the phone. We have some pinups at the back that are not very good. Or they are of bad characters and bad things. Or they are a teaser for the next issue with a Dracula fetish feel though. I'm getting it up right now just from her presence. I recommend this issue but not if you are unable to disassociate a comic from the annoying recontextualization by losers on social media. Decent issue, decent snowman bit, decent introduction to a character. He's kind of a bit like Pratt's son, actually. I'll rank this issue as a seven thumbs up. 